The scientific paper claiming Gidong Padang is not a real pyramid has been retracted. The journal that hosted it removed it from the game, saying it's not real science. And the reaction? Well, it's been exactly what you'd expect. If the Atlantis hunters out there, they're all complaining that this is censorship, that this is another example of big archaeology or science, either refusing to change or digging their heels in or deliberately obfuscating the truth or all kinds of different things, but it's always one variable of that oppression, suppression of the information. And then the archaeologists, well, they're doing the victory laps on Twitter that you would expect them to be doing right now. You know, they're all out there, woo-hoo-hoo. Except for the odd times that they complain that, you know, they're being somehow oppressed themselves because some some journal or some place like the New York Times doesn't cover it exactly the way they want. So this is quite a mess. This is a huge old hairy mess. So I figured I would weigh in here because I know that some people are going to want to know why the paper was retracted and they don't trust archaeologists and... Then I know that there's other people that are going to want to know why people don't trust archaeologists. So I figure we've got two stories there that are dovetailed right together to tell. And since I like to play on both sides of the fence, well, you know, I figured I would go ahead and do that. So this is going to be a whole lot more nuanced than usual. And if you've watched me before, you know, nuance is a thing I'm pretty big on here. If you've watched my videos and you come in here and you're like, oh man, he's either on team A or team B. You've probably been freaked out when I'm not even on team C or D, but it's either E or F. In this case, I'm going to be over in the Korean alphabet. We're, we're off the charts on this one. So you're going to see a lot of like both sides of this. I'm going to play devil's advocate a little bit here. I'm going to, going to critique the psychology of both sides in this situation. So you're going to see a little evil twin action here. Not, not twin action. Sorry, I said that wrong. This is going to be more of like a yin and your yang kind of... God damn Whatever. Hi, my name's Dan and welcome to the Dunking. So let's talk about what the paper did that got it retracted. Well, in a nutshell, it committed the same two sins that Dr. Martin Sweatman's paper on Gobekli Tepe's Filler 43 did. Number one, it was associated with Graham Hancock. That's always a sin. And, and number two, it was a little bit too out there with its, its conclusions. It was too sure of them. It was too pronounced with them. Um, you, you know that these papers are going to be heavily attacked. These guys should know. Dr. Nadi Wajaja, Graham Hancock, all, the, the, particularly Dr. Nadi Wajaja, he should be aware that his, his work here is going to get some criticism. Maybe he wasn't, but he should be aware. In that case, you don't want to leave big old glaring statements that are just standing there like radiocarbon dating of organic soils from the structures uncovered multiple construction stages dating back thousands of years BCE with the initial phase dating to the Paleolithic era. What he's saying there is that dirt is proving that humans built the structure. Then he follows that up with, These findings offer valuable insights into the construction history of Ganong Padang, shedding light on the engineering capabilities of ancient civilizations during the Paleolithic era. Now myself, I would have worded it a lot more like, Radiocarbon dating of organic soils from the structure seems to indicate multiple occupations of the site, which may coincide with multiple eras of construction. Further investigation is needed, ideally by archaeologists, because this is possibly our first indicator of human engineering in the region. By making it less cards on the table, Dr. Nadi Wajaja would have protected himself against this retraction a whole lot more. I mean, that's really the only thing that they can really complain about is that this is what he said. As a matter of fact, that's basically the very first complaint, is that, that his summary is, is wrong. And had he, you know, let Graham Hancock make that argument and Graham Hancock go out of the world and say, this is evidence of a 20,000 year old pyramid. And Dr. Nadia would judge us say, no, I, I, you know, that's Graham Hancock saying that. All I did, I found some dirt and I, I wrote this paper and I think this might have been, he could have sent Hancock the email and said, hey dude, 25,000 year old pyramid right over here. And not had to hang his credentials on it and not had to open the uh, paper up to being retracted. Now that would have been the smart way to handle this, knowing that it's going to be attacked, right? And this is kind of a no-brainer here. Because here's the thing, there was no real artifacts found at the site. There's like three different rocks that they hold up and they say these these might be man-made. Dr. Nadi Wajaja seems to be very much the opinion that they're man-made. Eh, geologists and archaeologists, eh, not so much. Since they didn't have anybody out there shifting, you know, uh, the old uh, screens and whatnot, looking for those microchips and flakes, which is like the leftover bits from when people do flint napping and stuff, so that they can prove that at least tools were made in the area. They didn't look for any of that stuff because they just grabbed these little soil samples, and there really haven't been proper archaeology done there. So you can't really, 
make these kinds of claims with the site. You can say that it's a possibility and that would be probably accurate. I mean, we would have to do more investigation in order to know. But the way that Dr. Nadi Wajaja is like, well, this, it, it, it begs, it begs for this. It, it's, it's the kind of mistake that, um, that's, that sucks because it's like, it's like sitting down and watching somebody play chess and they're doing something and you're just like, ah, because this is, it, it's, it, you, you, this is, you knew this was going to happen. You knew they were going to try to retract the paper, man, come on. Now, the evidence that he does use in lieu of artifacts is, is soil, is, is, is dirt, is sand, it, it's fill dirt. And it's something that, that archaeologists frequently will use as evidence for, like, humans being in an area, but they don't use it to establish a cultural layer per se. So, it's a little bit tricky here, right? I mean, you've, you've got dirt that's out of place, but, according to the geologists, but it's not enough for the archaeologists to call it a cultural layer. So you can't really say that it's not potentially an older site. Now, I know that some archaeologists out there have, have uh, cited the other archaeologists that live in the area and, and, and that have done the work in area Gedong Padang, and they've uh, dug under some of the stones, and they've dated to like 2,000 years ago to the stones that they've dug under. And archaeologists are hanging their hat on this is like you know the dating of this site is like 2,000 years old and it's like well you're gonna have to this is this is kind of it's it's ridiculous because it's 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 like they are deliberately ignoring the claims or something dig down into the dirt and you will find whether or not there's construction and that that's what Dr. Nadi Wajaja is. So if so like say you take a rock that's way up here and you check the, the, the stuff under it, the, the dirt under it, the carbon datable stuff under it, and you say, Oh, this is two thousand years old. But there's all this other dirt and, and maybe another rock here that's part of construction, like Graham Hancock and Dr. Nadi Wajaja are implying, right? Or saying. So if that's the case, you would kind of have to test the dirt under that rock that was under all that dirt. Why do I have to explain this to archaeologists? I shouldn't have to. This is it, it, The reason is, and this is why I get to make videos, thank you very much, archaeologists, because that kind of intellectual dishonesty permeates this discourse, and not just from the archaeologists. It is... It, it is it, when I first stuck my nose into this sphere, I had no clue that it was this polarized. Now, since the retraction, both Graham Hancock and Dr. Dottie Wajaja did exactly what you'd expect them to do, and they've complained of censorship and all of that, and suppression, and so you would expect that the academics out there were, you know, they, they knew this was coming. We all knew this was coming. I mean, you don't have to be in this community to know that the guys that, that, that are, you know, on the fringe of science tend to complain when they're suppressed in this manner, and they frequently cry censorship. So, so you know that the, the you know the archaeologists they they were prepared for this they had they, you know if this was a, a game of chess they had they had a gambit prepared for the whole <laughs> no, I'm lying they, they packaged up the whole idea of them being like oh we're we're suppressing information here let me package that up and just hand it to you so you can just go vomit it onto the world I'll give you an example of my personal sphere and then we'll talk about some other stuff too because good lord this was hilarious. The first thing is, I uploaded a short a few days ago, and I talked about the Ganong Padang paper. The very first thing I say is that they retra they retracted it, and that's crap. And then I go on to complain about the retraction process and how they end up scrubbing papers, and it's hard to find papers. And I mentioned that it happened to me exactly. And the paper that it happened to me on was on the uh, metal plate in the pyramid of Howard Weiss's thing. And I'll talk discuss that a little bit more in a second. But when I mentioned this, I, I upload this video, and it's like, most people get where I was coming from, but a few people didn't, and they tended to be archaeologists, and I kept getting hammered, 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 being told, that paper's still available. Dr. Nadi Wajaja's paper's still available. What are you talking about? Well, I'm talking about the process in general, and I'm using the th thing that's trending right now so that it gets clicks, even though, for whatever reason, YouTube decided not to introduce it to the algorithm. Screw you, YouTube algorithm gods. <laughs> but... Uh, that's so fucking obvious, man. Especially the people that are content creators themselves. You know how this works. But, but, but no, 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 no. Oh, you're complaining about this paper not being whole. Okay, let me let me be very clear here. Doctor Nadi Wajaja has put the paper out for free since the very since since it was first published, right? 
Graham Hancock would host it. There's numerous other sites that would host it. I've got it on my hard drive. I would host it on my Discord. There's hundreds of people, I dare say thousands, that have it on their hard drives that would do the same thing. This paper is not one that's going to disappear. Okay, and that's given because it's a very public, popular paper. It's in the media. But the one that I talked about a second ago, the Howard Weiss metal paper, the metal plate in the Great Pyramid that Howard Weiss supposedly found, now the first paper that from the metallurgies, whatever, is from like 1980s, that first paper was scrubbed from the records. You see here how you don't see the damn thing in this list. Now, I emailed them, and then somebody let me know after I uploaded that short, some other archaeologist who was arguing with me about it, that you can actually get the thing now. You can order it. He's told me you can order it through mail order, but you can actually get the PDF even of the thing now. I'd like to think it's because I emailed them, but maybe not. But this certainly was not available when I did the research for this video four months ago. It is available now, which is great. I, I, I can't complain about that. But my point is, I'm doing research for videos. These guys know that I do research that I don't just be like well fucking I think maybe it was made out of geopolymers so we'll just call it a geopolymer and we'll call it electric universe and call it a day now I don't play that game I, I do research I look into the shit right and these guys know that but they're not going to treat me like that when it comes to this situation oh no so I express frustration with my inability to find something while I'm doing research and archaeologists are dismissing it it seems, it seems like they just conflate this. You, anytime you say like, man, I'm having trouble finding information. Would you guys not hide it? They're like, oh, you're just accusing us of hiding giant bones in the Smithsonian. And, and then they laugh it off. Not realizing that they're not the only ones that are conflating this with them hiding giant bones in the Smithsonian. Other people see them doing this and they're like, oh my God, do you see how dishonest these sons of bitches are? Do you see how little they care? They know that they're hiding information and they just don't give a shit. They don't want us to be able to look into it. <sighs> it gets pretty messed up. They'll try to tell you that retractions aren't really that big of a deal. It doesn't mean really happen that often. Last year was a record year for retractions with 10,000 of them. 10,000 retractions. It is becoming a bit of a problem, and it is the kind of thing that would makes me wonder, anyway, why they're all rambling about looking at individual retractions, playing whack-a-mole with it, instead of, like, I don't know, going after the journals themselves or the, the process itself and saying, what in the actual hell's going on here? Something's problematic if this much is coming out. Now, maybe maybe this has been a problem all the time. Maybe science has been plagiarizing the shit out of itself and lying about things and doing things wrong for so long that it, it just took AI to crack it. But I don't personally think so. I think, that, I think that we're having a problem in the last few years. I think we're having a bit of an ideological war between people and it, it's bleeding into places where it shouldn't. They know Atlantis hunters are not going to find the papers they're looking for far more likely than people that are doing independent research into other things. I mean, they, they make damn good sure that those papers get retracted, right? So, now there's obviously a disparity in both the power and the cohesion of the Atlantis hunting community and archaeology, and it favors archaeology in both cases. I mean, the cohesion we'll discuss first, they, they tend to have an academic consensus, and while some people will definitely be outside of it, all of them are not going to agree on everything. To the people who discuss Atlantis, we very much get a megalith. We very, or excuse me, a monolith and a megalith. We get one, <coughs> this is archaeology's take on all your bullshit. So it does very much come across like we're talking to the same person over and over and over again, as opposed to, well, with us Atlantis hunting types, there would tend to be like the herd of cats, right? There's as many different opinions almost as there are members of the club, if you even call us a club. So that's a big spot to begin with. But the disparity of power is something that the academic community has firmly in their hands, at least here with, with this discussion. I, I'll give you a very real example. When Graham Hancock went to record at Serpent Mound for Ancient Apocalypse, the permission was denied, and the exact thing that he was told was, because the presenter of this series, Graham Hancock, proposes a theory and story that did not align with what we know to be true about Serpent Mound, your request is declined. 
Now, I don't have to look very far to find out who told the tribe this stuff. It's a standard archaeological argument. I hear it all the time. The only thing missing from it is Hancock also thinks that indigenous people couldn't build a mound. Beyond that, this is, this is the exact kind of thing you see all the time, and you see it every where you can't go to the Graham Hancock subreddit without seeing a bunch of these guys. You can't go to any of the Facebook groups without seeing a bunch of these guys. Anywhere you go, and I don't mean people that are interested in both sides of the debate and that and that tend to lean towards a skeptical side. I mean people that are just out to mock, deride, shit all over all the things associated with Graham Hancock. Which makes it goddamn hard for somebody like me, who frequently goes to bat for archaeologists, to say, yeah, they're not hiding information, they're not doing it all underhandedly, because it comes across quite frequently as emotionally driven and underhanded as hell. In the Society to American Archaeology letter that I complain about the racism in all the time, because the racism being, they accuse Graham Hancock of promoting racism by claiming that Atlantis honey is rooted in racism and then they blame somebody for starting it that isn't the guy that started it. It's just all from historians lying about it. It's pretty good stuff. But they, they do another funny thing here too. They, they try to attribute the lack of faith in the medical community in the post-COVID world to Graham Hancock. Because, you know, it's his fault. He, he, he talks about pyramids. So that's why people quit trusting doctors so much since 2020. Now, I, despite ignoring the whole lockdown and all of that stuff and all of the polarization that came with that and, and the way that it made a lot of people not trust the medical community, again, pay attention to the nuance here. I am not saying I don't trust the medical community. I am saying that this situation created that, okay? So, so don't go all crazy. I mean, oh, my God, he's a blah, blah, blah. Calm your teats. But... We do know that that situation created a lot of dissension and a lot of polarization and a lot of people quit trusting the medical community. But did you know that right now, the majority of articles, it seems, that are retracted are medical articles. Nine of the top 10 most heavily cited articles on retractionwatch.com are medical articles. Nine of 10 of the most cited. That means these were the ones that people were using to inform their papers which means the trail of shit from that is all over the place. My point is, the medical community is what's screwing up their reputation, what's besmirching their good name, not Graham Hancock. And the academics in the archaeological community know this. The, at least they should. It took me five minutes to figure it out. So I would assume that somebody with access to more papers, is, well, maybe it's harder to find when you got access to more papers. Anyway, they know this. But they pretend that they don't, and they portray it this way to the public. And when they do that kind of shit, it becomes so difficult to... You can say whatever you want about them. They're, they have painted themselves out as liars, as far as my community is concerned, as far as the pyramidians are concerned. These guys lie. They, they're willing to say anything for ideological purposes when it comes to Graham Hancock. They will say whatever it takes to deplatform it. Well, now at that point, man, how the hell are you going to stand here and argue, well, we're not trying to suppress him, we're not trying to censor him, what are you talking about? Just say it all you want, man. Hi highlight little things all you want. You paint this broad brush picture of you guys running around all over the internet, shitting all over the place. So why do archaeologists blame Hancock for all this stuff? <laughs> Well, pretty much straightforward, it's to justify shitty behavior. I'll give you an example. I'll give you a metaphor. Say, say that you were a Halo fan, or your brother's a Halo fan, and then he joins a Call of Duty group. And he does that just to tell everybody their COD sucks, COD sucks, COD sucks, COD is the shittiest game ever. Halo, all the way, baby. Would you think as a little immature, maybe a little bullyish, maybe a little shitty? Just, just, just kind of shitty, just kind of like, man, that's weird, okay. But, 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 you know, if he told you, hey, man, Call of Duty is a video game that racists play. That's the only racists play Call of Duty. Well, well maybe, may, maybe you would think that was okay. But if he justified that in his head, well, then he would feel okay doing that, wouldn't he? Yeah. That's what we have going on here. That's, that, that is 
exactly what we have going on here. This is now a holy war. And some of them, they will admit. That they're occasionally on Reddit, you will find one of these guys that will admit that they're there because it feels good as well. But they're still trying to change the world. But it also feels good to have these debates. But that's the whole point. They're there because being shitty to people feels good to humans. Okay? We... we most people get a euphoric little rush when they get to exercise some cruel power over somebody else, when they demean somebody else, when they stand on somebody else. This is why it's been a problem throughout all of human history. Now, we, we, we have that exact thing going on, but you can't justify that without some reason. Otherwise, you're just a shitty person. So this is the justification, and they will conflate it with anything, uh, anything. Graham Hancock's responsible. I'm surprised he's not responsible for COVID, let alone the, the way that the medical community has been shit on since the COVID thing. And even if you get like, if you get the archaeologists to admit, okay, maybe all these individual things are not, are, are not problematic. They'll just go to this overarching crap of false history is problematic. It's harmful to society, which Two things. Number one, no. On, on a fundamental level, no. Most societies throughout human history have had no fucking clue about their real history, and they've done just fine. Now, 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 you can start getting into the subtle political, social nuances of all of this stuff, and then, and then, and then we can we can look at your side of the whole thing if that's what your angle is going to be. And it seems to me that by saying that you have to have the right history, you're being pretty goddamn colonial. What, you're going to go into a group of indigenous people that, that have a myth about their creation and where they came from, and you're going to tell them they need their right history so it's not harmful to their society? Is that how this works? Is that how you archaeologists handle stuff? Do you see how easy it is to flip something bullshit on its ear and make somebody look like a goddamn racist if you're trying to do just that? Pretty simple, huh? Do I get to kick you now? Can I bully you now? <sighs> Gross. This was a chance for the archaeological community to educate Atlantis hunters on why the paper was retracted. I mean, it would have it would have took like a polite video or something. You had to be subtle about it, but it it, it it's not difficult to do. You could have explained why fill dirt is you know in some cases more robust evidence than others. This is wouldn't have been, or or you could just call it dirt and and mock it. The, the options, like the, the decisions that were taken by the public faces in this community, the, by, by the archaeologists who deal with pyramidians, have been absurd, have been ivory tower, have been ridiculous. You're telling us that we, you're, we're not being suppressed, e even as you, you laugh about the idea of it. Now, let me ask you a question. If, if, if somebody says to you, hey, man, I feel that blah, blah, blah is going on, and you say, no, you don't, and laugh it off, how do you think they're going to react? How the fuck do you think they're going to react? Why do you guys engage in the public sphere with the intention of changing minds when you deliberately use vinegar instead of honey, like on purpose? You have both sitting in front of you, and you choose vinegar to stroke your egos. That's why it has nothing to do with science. It has nothing to do with fixing society. It has everything to do. I get it, because as an electrician, if somebody was to come in and start telling me that I a bunch of bullshit about wiring that was wrong, I'd be mad too. But you don't get to maintain your dignity as a scientist, as a community of scientists, and get in the mud and roll around with the pigs. Just like I told Dr. Nadi Wajaja and Graham Hancock how Dr. Nadi Wajaja should handle this by using Graham Hancock as his proxy out there and let Hancock go out and yell at people and make the big statements that are all encompassing and they really put it out there and then Dr. Nadi Wajaja can make a reserved scientific statement like he should be. You guys can do the same thing. You can write an article that is scientific sounding, like the, the, the kind that, that Hoops used to write before he jumped on this whole racist bandwagon, it, it, and something like that, and then let your your followers, let them weaponize the shit out of that and look all ugly with it and get gross and roll around in the mud. But no, 
no, no, no, that won't feel good and it won't let you have as much of a finger on the whole thing, right? You won't like be doing it. So eh, that's not gonna happen. You know, compared to Hancock and other Atlantis hunters, academics, archeologists have institutional power like locked by a landslide. So it's kind of hilarious when they complain about things like the way the New York Times covered it. So it's like, oh my God, this 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 magazine, this this newspaper, this legacy media freaking birdcage liner didn't get things right. Oh my God, what are we doing here? This is so terrible. You, you, you. We're totally not suppressing you guys, but we're going to, you know what? We won this game 42 to nothing, not 35 to nothing. And we are going to bitch at the scorekeepers until they get that last touchdown, damn it. Dude, you, you, the, the lack of self-awareness is, is palpable. Do you see this tweet from Jimmy? That's from my last long video, the megalithic clamps bid. Now, I've made three videos criticizing Jimmy's position on things, yet this is a response that I get from him. I was having the same experience with most archaeologists until I pressed them on the lies about the origins of Atlantis hunting and the ties to racism. To quote one archaeologist, no matter what, you will never convince me this isn't tied to racism. Very sciencey, I know. Yeah. <laughs> the point is, is that me and Jimmy can have disagreements and, and we don't fight with each other. Me and, and Milo have disagreements and, and don't fight with each other. Now, I don't press either of these guys and call them racists or call them chills or call them you know grifters or or, or any of that stuff i don't imply that they're just full of shit i, I don't impl i don't insult them and i don't hound them okay so like if, if jimmy and me look at something and we see it different i don't think that he's grifting any more than i think somebody who says walla walla sweets aren't the best damn onion on the planet is a liar even though they obviously are but they would obviously like we're not the same man i'm not the gold standard of humanity you're not the gold standard of humanity my thinking's not the gold standard of humanity your thinking's not the gold standard of humanity you don't get to go around looking down on people because they think differently than you and maintain an air of academic superiority you got to pick one of those two I can do that. I can, I can look look down on all the people I want because I'm not trying to maintain an air of impartial academic superiority. But honestly, to some degree, I can't, right? I, I would probably lose subscribers like a, a stuck pig lose blood if I started just, you know, taking hardcore sides on everything. I, I've cultivated a following that, that expects different than that, right? You're scientists. You, the community, the society that we live in, expects you to be above rolling in the mud with fucking internet trolls. Fucking Christ. And I would like to be able to say that I get along with academics and archaeologists as well as I do with guys like Jimmy, and I used to, but they keep pulling this ivory tower elitist crap like we're seeing here. I mean, okay, you could say you think that Ganong Penang is a 20,000-year-old pyramid? Let me explain to you the reasons that I disagree with you. But instead, it is, you think Ganong Padang is a 20,000 year old pyramid? So stupid! I haven't seen a community more in need of a social media manager since the bronies dropped in 2008. Now both archaeologists and myself have made videos criticizing the Ganong Padang paper and pointing out where it has flaws in the past. Now who do you think is more likely to get Jimmy's eyeballs? Me or the guy that calls him a grifter? I, I'm, I'm, you know, I did take a lot of psych classes when before I dropped out of college, but, 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 I'm, I didn't graduate, so I'm just gonna go. I'm, I'm spitballing here, but I'm gonna assume that he's probably gonna be less offended by me than he is by the people that call him a grifter, call him dishonest, call him racist. I could be wrong, but I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that he's more likely to accept the message from me than he is from the people that call him fucking names. Now, just like I said about Dr. Nadi Wajaja and Graham Hancock, how he should let Graham Hancock do the heavy lifting as far as the non-scientific statements, I'll say it again. Archaeologists should be doing the same thing and let the internet trolls take what they say and go run with it. But instead, they be, be the internet troll. And so, like, look, man, I, I didn't name people in this video that said some really stupid shit. Because I'm, I'm not trying to pick on anybody about this, but th I saw uh, this has been, I have lost, I already have had an issue with the archaeological community since they 
refuse to address the lies that Society for American Archaeology has told. This is insane. The way that this has been handled is I'm watching internet trolls, not just trolls. I mean, like the call of like the Halo Call of Duty metaphor. These guys are just they're just in it to feel good, man. There's to, to hell with who you piss on. To hell with the damage we cause. I'm right, damn it. I'm right. I mean, come on, man. So the journal isn't the only scientific group that shit the bed on this. The archaeological community's reaction has been kind of shitty as well. It's like it's really difficult for you guys to maintain this air of superior knowledge and sophistication when you act like play, playground bullies and just like throw mud and, and say insulting stuff. And so, you know, it's like I could give advice all day long on how you should do this differently, but I, you're not going to listen anyway. You're all, you guys are all looking at freaking Younger Dryas papers going, oh, which, one, which one of these are we going to get retracted next? And then you're going to wonder why your retractions give Hancock so much traction. It's just, it's the most absurd thing in the world. But one more thing before I go. I know lots of you really want to know what my opinions are on the retraction process here because apparently some people think that it's difficult to understand what I should think or what I do think on how this whole thing went down. So my opinion on the retraction of this paper is that they should have done it like 